It's Acts chapter number 9, verse number 1. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it should be told thee what thou must do. Skip now down into verse number 10. It says, There was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call, upon, that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk, Lord. We don't, I don't take for granted the opportunity to preach, Lord, and I'm so thankful for everything you've done, thankful for the, the confidence and the faith that the pastor has in me and also in Brother Jordan, Lord, that he allows us to stand and preach your word. Lord, as he's gone, we ask you just help him, Lord. You just uh, strengthen our pastor this morning down at Victory, and you just help them. Lord, help Brother Greg in his throat. Lord, I ask you now, you be with what you've laid upon my heart. Lord, just ask you just help bring your remembrance. Lord, what you've placed there, Lord, I give it to your people the way you gave it to me, that it can be a help to each and every one of us here this morning. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 The first thing I'm going to look at is we just see in verse number 1 as we see the destruction that Paul that has talked about. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest. We know uh, uh, this destruction comes because of his desire that we see in verse number 2. And he says, desired of him letters to Damascus. That is what Saul did. Uh, many time I, I've ever uh, taught or preached or anything on Saul, uh, the best way I could try to tell people is he's the type of person that would walk through those doors right now and have all of us killed. Uh, me for preaching, you for listening, just having anything to do with God, uh, that is the destruction he sought to bring on God's people. That, that We even see that in Ananias a little bit later on when he tells him, uh, Ananias talking to the Lord, he goes, he has uh, uh, talking about um, uh, the evil he hath done in verse number 13 to thy saints at Jerusalem. That's what he, his destruction that he wanted to bring uh, on the people of God. But we see in verse number 4, we see the dropping. And it says, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? You know, brother, brother uh, Daniel Waters even talked about falling on our face before God. It's not even just about falling on our face. It's about that falling on our face and what? Listening. What did it say? And he fell to the earth and heard a voice. Too many times we, we might be willing to come and pray, but we're not willing to stay and listen. Too many times we might be willing to fall on our face before God for whatever thing that we may be bringing before Him, but are we willing to stay there and listen? Are we willing to listen to that voice for, and get the answer for what it is uh, that we are seeking? We see the dropping in verse number 4, and we see the directives that are given. In verse number 6, we see that uh, when Saul stands up and we see the directive, God tells him, uh, to go, to tell him to go into the city and, what, and, and seek there, and he's going to find out what to do. And then we see the directive in verses 11 and 12 um, given to Ananias. He tells Ananias to go uh, out in the street called Straight and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. So we see the directive given, and it's important to realize that, that we are to follow the directives, obviously, that God gives us in our life. But too many times we get hung up in verse number 13 in the doubt that Ananias had. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. God tells us to do something, and we immediately turn to doubt. But God, God, I'll do anything except that. I'll do anything except that one thing that you'll ask me to do. 
because too many times of the doubt that creeps in our mind. And we'll get into that here just a little bit in the message. But we see the delight in verse number 15 and 16. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. The delight that God gets when we're just willing to do what he asks us to do. That's it. God doesn't ask us to be perfect. God doesn't ask us to be somebody that we're not. He just asks us to do His will that He has for our life, whatever that may be. That's all He asks for us. And the delight that that brings, if we are willing to do those things, if we are just be willing to be used of God for whatever it is that He has in our life, whether it be to get up here and sing, whether we've been called to preach, whether it be to, to teach, or whatever it may be, just be willing to be used. But too many times that doubt creeps in because we think, well, I'm not worthy. Well, I have something for that. 1 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am chief. So Paul tells Timothy he's the chief. So there's no reason why God can't use us to do something. See, God wants to use us to do things. He wants to use Emmanuel Baptist Church to change our community, to change the world. He wants to use each and every one of us. From the youngest to the oldest in here, He wants to use us. I talked about, I had the honor and the privilege of just teaching Sister Annette's Sunday school class this morning. And I told the kids, and I was telling the kids, talking about how it doesn't matter how old we are, all it takes is just to have that childlike faith to see the things that God can do. But see, as adults, we allow that doubt to creep in. We allow that doubt. Well, God, I can't do that. Well, God, when we get too cynical, well, this person ain't going to listen to this, and this person ain't going to listen to that. And we, be, we begin to allow that doubt to creep in, to keep us from doing what God wants us to do. So what I have is what I want to preach on, just this simple question this morning. Will you let him do it through you? See, God can do whatever he wants to do. And he can use us, but we have to be willing to let him. We have to be willing to allow him to use us. He's not going to force it. What we hear talk about, God's a gentleman. We talk about salvation. He's not going to come out there, Brother Tommy, and grab you and pull you to the altar and tell you you've got to be saved. It's the same thing with being used of us. Being called to preach and, and sitting there and, and reading Scripture and praying about what God had for my life and praying and, and having that doubt. But God, I, was, I, I said, I, Miss Melissa, I went to the church all this time and said I was saved and said I was called to preach. And Who's going to believe me, Brother Donald? You wasn't here through all that. Uh, who was it that asked me? It was Lexi that asked me. Wasn't it? I owe you all a cake still. So we're going to have a cake at some point because somebody told me I still owed you a cake when Brother Doug brought that up. But all that doubt that goes through your mind of God, but what about this and what about that and what about this? And God's not going to force you to do anything so will you allow him to do it through you number one will you allow him to rescue the perishing through you Amen. allow you to rescue the perishing those that are lost and those that are in the world what's matthew chapter number 28 tells it, it talks about uh going and seeking and finding and and, and teaching them uh, of all those things you think well i can't do that but why can't we i'm not talking about being a missionary I think I have it in here this week. The brother that was here last week towards the end of uh, uh, Brother Richie that was here towards the end of the week. How many of you got his prayer card? How many of you pray for these? Now, I'm not talking about getting down and saying a simple prayer. That is wonderful, and God bless you if you do, and there's nothing wrong with that. God, pray for our missionaries. But when was the last time you ever had a burden for any of them? One of them. Just one. I'm not trying to pick on them, but we have some visitors here this morning, and I seen the lady get up, and she said, I just want to see your all's missionary board. When was the last time you looked at the missionary board? How many missionaries can you tell me, name them by name, that are on that board, besides the ones that we have come through here quite often? Because there's some that are, on the, that are on the field all the time that don't get to come through here all the time, that we just get the missionary letters from. How many of them can you name? See, doing these things, allowing God to do things and help rescue the perishing isn't always just about us being able to go because we might not be able to go. It might be giving a little bit extra money for one of the missionaries that's burdened your heart that we can send to him. Miss Tammy didn't get those all the time. A little bit extra money for this missionary, that missionary, to help meet their needs. What about just praying for them? God, show me a burden for one of those missionaries on the board that I know is just that's going through things or just need extra special prayer. Lord, show me one of those that I can pray for them. That's how we can help rescue the perishing in the world. 
What about rescue the perishing in our way? I meant to grab one of these and I forgot. If you have not looked, look on the table in the back. We have new tracks that we got in this week. If you've not seen it, grab it and look at it. You all know the one that has the American flag on it at the bottom it says there is hope. Well, this is kind of like that one, except at the top it says coronavirus is there hope. So take that out there. Give that out. But how do we get those in our way? How can we do? Do we do anything? Will you allow God to help get those that are lost to the Lord that you come in contact with every day? When was the last time you passed out a track? When was the last time you told anybody about the Lord? When was the last time you was just willing to live that life in front of them that you didn't uh, uh, try to act like the world and do those certain things? See, there are things that we can do that we come in contact with and rescue the perishing day to day. Will, will you allow God to do it through you? See, too many times we allow that doubt. Well, I can't talk. They're not going to listen to me. They're too far out there in the world. They won't listen to anything I have to say. They won't, they won't do this or they won't do that or whatever. And this is... Look, I did not get a response back in this text message. I didn't expect to get a response back to this text message. But sometimes, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there. I have a group text with all my brothers and sisters. So hopefully my sister, she'd probably be the only one watching this morning. But we have a group text. And probably here about two weeks or so ago, she sent me a text message um, that they are going to, um, at, at all states, they're not taking cash anymore when they come in their office. You have to, I guess, use credit card, or maybe they'll just come in and just give it to you for free. I don't know. Maybe we'll switch insurances back, Tina, if they're going to give it to us for free. But they're not taking cash. Said, going to a cashless society, she said. And I sent back, hallelujah, amen. And they sent back, well, why do you say that, brother? They asked, Josh, why did you say that? I'm like, hey, that's getting closer and closer to Jesus coming back. I'm ready to go. And then it was just dead silence on that. But just being willing to live. Allow, we have no idea sometimes if we are just willing to live, that how that might touch somebody just to ask questions. Just being with that, that might free up that person to say, what about this? Why, you, you seem different than everybody, or you do this different, or you act different, or this doesn't seem to bother you like it does everybody else. Just we have no clue when we are willing to just live about how, we're not, how they weren't willing to ask questions. I didn't plan on doing this. I, I, I don't know why I'm going to have to do this, but God laid it on my heart up there, so I'm going to come back and get it. I just took this out of my pocket, and I laid it back here a while ago. Well, they're not ready to follow me on the camera because Brother Josh never moves. I was standing back here, and I was asking Miss Brittany how um, Sunday school went, and she said it was wonderful, and they was back there passing out masks, and they, and they had this mask, and I was like, that's pretty cool. And, and she gave me one. So I'm going to wear this to work tomorrow. And if you don't see it, it says faith on the side of it. It's not about trying to, to make a statement. Just say, oh, hey, that's pretty cool. You don't know what kind of conversation starter that may be. You have no clue. And we had a whole heck of a conversation starter at our work the other day when somebody wore in one of his Trump and Pence and somebody threw a fit and called HR. Let's see if they call HR about just having faith on one. <laughs> just being willing to be used of God to rescue the perishing. It is a lost and dying and confused world out there people that have no idea what it's like to be able to come in here sister caitlin already sent me a text message this morning they went into a church down there and she goes it just feels weird it went into a church with a mask and hand sanitizer and doing temperature checks and all kinds of stuff and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that if you need to do that but it's nice to have that peace of god that god's just going to take care of us god's just going to take care of us and people need to have that peace will you allow him through you to rescue the perishing number two when we only have four, Brother Tommy, I promise you we'll be out no later than 1 o'clock. I started to ask, and I just, I'll just say this. I started to ask because, you know, we, we, I come out of Sunday school and it's about 5 till, and I was in here for a few minutes, and I was like, man, it seems like we've been in here for a while. What time is it? And I looked up, and it was 5 after 11. I was like, nobody's in a hurry to start because they know hey, Brother Josh is preaching this morning. We're going to get out by noon no matter what time we start, Brother Doug. That's what they were thinking. It don't matter. Number two. Will you allow God to do it through you to reach the pardoned? I'm talking about those that are saved. They're just wayward. They're outside of church. Will you allow God through you to reach them? Do you talk about them? Or do you talk with them? In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 20, it says, For I fear lest when I come I should not find you such as I would, that I shall be found in you such as you would not. Lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strife, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults. Do you talk about those that aren't here? Or are we willing to talk with them? 
It's easy to sit and say, well, I can't believe so-and-so is not at church today. Brother Doug's not here. We knew they wouldn't be here. Well, I can't believe so-and-so. They, they, just, they, they come and go, Brother Donald. They're in church for six months, and they're out for six months. And they're in church for six months, and they're out for six months. Do, do, do you talk about them that way, or do you try to walk with them? Hey, are you struggling? Is there anything I can help you with? What can I do for you? Because too many times, we don't try to reach them. We try to preach to them. One of the verses we always had through jail, the, 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 one of the, the main verses, the, the motto verse or whatever through jail, in Jude, chapter, in Jude verses 21 and 22, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and that some have compassion making a difference. What if we just had compassion on them? Look, it was wonderful. It was wonderful, the cards that we put out uh, that we had that we sent to a bunch of those at Christmas time. When was the last time you just slot a burden that you sent him a card? Hey, we just, I just want to let you know we miss you. I'm not trying to preach to you. I'm not trying to just, just let you know that we miss you, and we'd love to have you back at church. When was the last time we reached out? See, it's, it's quick and it's easy that we'll preach to them. Hey, you know you need to be in church. Well, they know that. If they've been in church any amount of time, they know they need to be in church. And there might be a time and place that maybe we do need to tell them that. But at some point in time, it just gets old. Some point in time, it probably just gets tiresome hearing. You need to be in church. Why aren't you in church? I don't care what happened here, what happened there, or this or that. You just need to be in church. What if we just got a burden for him? What if we had that childlike faith like Jackson did and just pray for him? Hey, I just want to see him in church. I just, I just want to see my uncle and his family in church. And look what happened, lo and behold. What if we had that same type of faith? I, I, we, could, we could go through and every empty spot that is here this morning, we could fill it up with people who are members of Emmanuel Baptist Church that are not here. What if you just ask, God, give me a burden for one. You show me one that I can reach out to. Maybe I have their phone number that I can text them. Maybe I can look up their address and send them a card. But show me somebody that I can reach out to that might possibly make a difference. Because you have no idea what they're going through in their life. You have no idea that, that, that the very next time that you may send in the card might be that time, you know what? I do need to go back in church. It might happen, it might not. I don't know. That's up to God. That's between them and God. But we allow God to do something through us. Because too many times, we're so quick to write them off. I know I, I don't call and ask the way I should. I just look like if God can't get him here, why should I? But what kind of compassion is that, Brother Ray? What kind of compassion are we showing if that's the attitude that we take? that we're not willing to reach out to them. Will you allow God through you to reach the pardon? Third, this one's tough. I know, I promise. The, the last one is a whole lot better than this one. Will you allow God through you to remedy the problems? Having an ought with somebody, having an ought with the preacher, having an ought with the brother and sister. Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 32. And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as, what does it say if we know that verse? As God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Can you forgive? Why do we want to hold a grudge, Brother Donald? Why do we want to put somebody up on a pedestal like they're supposed to be perfect, and if they're not perfect, we're going to be mad at them, we're going to hold a grudge against them for whatever it may be, but we expect God just to forgive us of anything that we do wrong. We expect God just to boom up, up, just, just as soon as we say, God, will you forgive me? We expect him to forgive me, but we don't want to do the same for somebody else. We don't want to do the same for somebody else. And when we look at that, then you think, oh, well, it doesn't matter I just how it is. No, because when we look at that person, it affects us internally. You can't tell me that if you have an ought with somebody, you can come in to church in the best spirit, you can come in ready to worship, and you can come in ready to see God move and do something great and do something wonderful, and you have a problem with Brother Clint, and you walk in and you see Brother Clint, which I don't know how you can anybody have a problem with Brother Clint, but if you did, you come in, you see Brother Clint get up here, and he's like, Brother Clint up there, I don't know why he's got to play every week. I get so tired of his guitar playing, he just gets on my nerves. And boom, you've killed the spirit. And it don't have to be Brother Clinton, it can be anybody else. I don't know why so-and-so gets to sing. I don't know why so-and-so gets to do this. I don't know why so-and-so has to sit there. I'm going to move to the other side of the church because I don't want to have to sit with, with, with whoever in my line of sight. Will we like God through us to take care of that? Can we forgive? And then here's the big one. 
And here's, I know this is tough. Can we forget? See, that's where it gets tough. Oh, I'll forgive them because God tells me I have to. Well, that's not really the spirit of forgiveness, but we'll get to that some other time. But can we forget? It's amazing how quick we are to recall and rehash things that gone on in the past instead of letting things move on. Never. Now, maybe this happened to somebody else, and I'm not special, so I don't think it has. But never have I come to the altar and asked God to forgive me of something and God say, well, I would, but you did this again three months ago, so I'm not going to do it this time. He's never reminded me, Brother Jordan, of what I've done. Now, the devil has. I've reminded myself. I've, I've done a good job of doing that. But never has God said, nope, you screwed up before. That's it. Why do we struggle with it so much? I understand it's in the flesh. I understand those things. But see, the problem is, is that becomes an excuse. Well, my flesh isn't saved, and it's just hard to me to forget. You don't know what they did to me. Uh, you're right. I don't know what they did to you. I know what I did to God. I know what I did to Jesus hanging there on the cross. I can read the torture and the torment that he went through. I remember Brother Bob talking about before, sometimes it do us good to go back and read what he went through. Do you good to remember what it is that he went through for you that he continually on a daily basis forgives and forgets. See, we use it as a crutch and we use it as an excuse. Well, I, I'm just in the flesh. I can't forgive them and I'm not going to forget what they did to me. Well, okay. Why do you then expect God to do the same for you? Why should we be able to come to God and seek God's forgiveness and ask Him to forget our sins and everything and we can't do the same for somebody else? Because the same that you can say, it, I'm in the flesh and it's hard to forget, they're in the flesh too. I, 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 they're, they're, I'm sure there are people this way. But I, I believe in my heart of hearts that this is still, uh, we still have a lot of good people in this world. And I don't believe everybody wakes up every morning, let's see whose life I can ruin today. I don't think anybody wakes up that may be on the job, that wakes up Brother Donald, let's, let's see how I can make Brother Donald's life miserable today. What can I do? And I'm sure they, they don't have a, a wheel of fortune thing that they just spin. Oh, let's see what's going to pop up. What are we going to do to him today? I'm sure they didn't mean to. Somewhere down the line, they made a bad decision or they may have done something that affected things that things went farther maybe than what they intended. But we should be willing to forgive and forget. And when we can't, why do we then expect God to do it through us? See, everything that we do is a reflection of Christ. If we, try, if we claim to be saved and we claim to be Christian, everything that we do is a reflection of Him. And if we're going to have an ought with people, if we're not going to be willing to pray for them, we're not going to be willing to forgive them, they're going to look at us and say, why do I need what you have? I can get this from the world. Last thing. I told you I'd be out of here about 1 o'clock, Brother Tommy. Will you let him do it through you? Having a revival of prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, we all know the verse tells us, pray without ceasing. I said this before. Uh, we made the announcement this all started back when, if you remember, uh, hopefully you haven't forgotten, when they wouldn't let us come and meet. And I believe it was a, I don't remember now if it was a Friday or Saturday night that we went to Brother Brian's. And uh, we went down and met in Brother Brian's basement. Um, he's got a nice little bunker way down. No, I'm just kidding. It's just We went down and had a little service in his basement. And down there in that, and even prior to that, I got thinking about how much our pastor was struggling with not being able to have service. And because we couldn't, it, it was going to look bad if I invited the whole church out for prayer, but we wasn't coming in for service. So we started with the group of guys, started just, just a few guys and a few fellows, and I told them at the time, uh, we'll have prayer until God says not to have prayer. And I've prayed about it. And there's been times that I haven't been able to make it. There's been times some of them haven't to make it. So if you were wondering, there's been times I know before uh, revival that Brother Doug has announced having prayer before revival. But just in case you are wondering, every Saturday night at 7.30, unless told otherwise, we meet for prayer. Because I believe that's our best avenue if we want to see something happen, is praying to God, asking God to do something for us. See, but too many times our prayer isn't as serious as it needs to be. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 15, it says, Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attent 
unto the prayer that is made in this place. How attentive are we to our prayer life? As I talked about and, and, and talked about in, in praying for the, uh, uh, I don't know what I did with it now, in, in praying for the, the missionaries. Now, that, that, well, it's again, I'm just preaching to myself. I can only deal with what I've personally dealt with here. Too many times... We're willing to have those generic prayers. Lord, pray for our missionaries, pray for our church services, pray for this and pray for that. But how many times do we seriously get on our face before God with a specific request, God, I need you and my desire is for you to move in this way. And seeing revival break out is going to begin with us praying and being sincere in our prayer. Look, I talked to Brother Doug about it. I've heard other people say it, and I talked to him about it, uh, uh, doing a couple things of, because he doesn't have uh, a clear uh, uh, guidance on what to do for September yet. And we, we've heard it mentioned about not being able to have service every single night and things to get behind. And, and I under, it's tough, Brother Ray, because I understand that to an extent. But I also have to wonder, do we desire to be here all the time? Now, I'm not telling you that you, don't, that you can be. There, there's going to be times that you have to work and you just can't make it. There's going to be times you have to travel and you just can't make it. Whether it be travel for work or whether you're just be on vacation, you need to break, whatever it may be. But how much do we desire to be here? Look, I talked about it this morning. Maybe it was just me. Maybe I'm the only one that felt this way when we walked in this morning. It just felt odd coming in here. We all come in, and, and look, and, and I completely understand this. I'm not saying this to say anything towards Brother Clint or anybody. And I understand there's a lot of the choir missing, but if we sang in the choir, we should have still been up here ready to go and let Brother Clint come up and say, look, there's only six of you. You better sing loud this morning. But we get to where we just look around, and we see, well, pastor's not here, and this person's not here, and that person's not here, and Brother Phil's not here to hoop and holler, and Brother James and Renee ain't here because we always expect them to sing. And we just hit a lull. Why? If we've prayed and have our hearts and our minds where they need to be, we've come in ready to worship regardless. I come in ready to worship regardless. And it's not about me. Like I said, I, we didn't even have to preach. We, we let, Brother Charlie said right there, Brother Charlie, he could, we let him get up and preach this morning. That, that woke him up, right? He's awake now. Whoa, wait a minute. What did he just say about me? But what I'm saying is, can we have a revival it's going to start with prayer. Will you allow God to do it through you? You know, I get to thinking about it times when we have, we come up here, and, and, and I, I, maybe that's just me. Maybe it's not Brother Jordan. It, this could just be me. But I always hate those times, so to speak. When you get to the end of the service and you have invitation, and you got just a couple people left on the altar, and you're standing up here, and it's just that awkward silence. Somebody's playing, and people are praying, and you just don't know what to do, Brother Doug. You just... You know, you're seeking God. God, do you want me to stop? And when do you want me to do? I, I hate to be rude to somebody and, and, and have them on the altar. And, and, and but let me ask you this. How long would you be willing to stay? We, get to, we give the invitation here in a little bit, and you've got two people on the altar over here, wherever there may be. How long are we willing to stay until they get what they need? And I'm not asking you to stay by no stretch of imagination. What if you're the one up here praying? How long are you willing to stay? God can tell God can tell Brother Jordan to shut it down. He can tell Brother Jordan, hey, it's time to end the invitation, and it's time to call everybody up here uh, to, to take up an offering and do all those things, but I haven't gotten what I need yet. So I'm staying right there. The music can stop all it's want. I'm not moving. Brother Randy, can come, he's going to have to come up here and tuck me on the back and say, hey, just want to let you know, we're all leaving. The doors are locked. Here's the code. You set the code when we leave. Are we that serious about things? Because all these other things we talked about, rescue the perishing, to reach the pardon, to, to get rid of those oughts, it all is going to start in our hearts and our conversation with God. Amen. It's all going to start with our prayers, what we have in our prayer life. That's the avenue we have, is in our prayer and in our word and in the, in, in the scriptures with him. And I'm afraid we don't take it serious enough that prayer time. Just spending that time with God in prayer. God, I just, I just want to talk to you. I just want to tell you how thankful I am. I talked about it Friday in my devotion. We are quick to be thankful for those things that we look at as big things. I can't tell you. I, I told you, if you read the devotion on Friday, I can't tell you how many times I thank God walking up down those fairways on Wednesday. I had a blast. 
But what about just being in prayer and thanking him for the fact that, God, I, just, I was able to go to church today. I wasn't sick. I had a vehicle that gave me to church. How many of those missionaries that we don't think about back there on that board that are on that side in all those third world countries that don't have a building like this to come into this morning? How many of them are dealing with the rain this morning? How many of them are dealing with it's 110 degrees outside and they're fighting snakes this morning that are falling from the buildings that we've heard about? See, we're, we, we forget about those things. We can have revival. We can have a true revival breakout, and it's going to start in our prayer life. It's going to start with us being serious with God. Will you allow God to do it through you? See, God can do it, and God will do it. And he can use whoever he wants to use. But we've got to allow him to use us. There is a lost and dying world out there that who knows what's going to happen, especially after the election in November. And it's going to be up to God's people wanting to see a change if we're going to see a change. And it's going to start with us being prayerful, being praying, and being sincere in our prayer life with God and saying, God, we need you to send revival. We need you to send something like people have never seen before. We want to see those. Brother Doug's talked about it. How, how many of you want to be able to see those people, they pass the end of the street and just have the, uh, uh, just the pull of God on that they just got to pull in and see what's going on? I told Brother Doug, to, and I told him the other day, to my knowledge, I, I don't, maybe they are now, that the church at the end still isn't meeting yet. I just want somebody to send us enough money just to buy from here to the end of the street. Why not? And fill this place up. That's so big that we don't have to knock out walls and expand walls. We just turn everything here in the classroom and just start meeting out there. You can park here and we'll have a bus take you over there. We'll, we'll get a, a, a four wheel or something to take you over there. Whatever it may be, God can do it. But it's going to take us being willing. It's going to take us being willing. God, what, is it, what do you want me to do to take part? Do I need to be more praying? Do I need to, to give more to the missionaries? Do I need to take things more seriously? Who can I reach out to? It's going to take each of us doing our part and being willing to allow God to do whatever it is through us. If you all remember that's been here for a while, we used to have those totes that used to sit around. We used to take prayer requests and put it in. And I'll never forget, I had the one that was sitting right up here, and I just took a blank piece of paper and put my name on it and said, God, whatever it is that you would have me to do. How willing are we to do that? I'm not asking you to do that this morning. I'm just asking you, how willing are you? How willing are you to be willing to come and say, God, whatever it is you want me to do? You want me to preach? You want me to teach? You just want me to pray? You want me to give more? Whatever it is, God, I want to see the world changed. What is it that you want me to do to take part in that? Would you ask him that this morning? Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.